Hello. So, I'm just going to demonstrate an issue with GCC, yet another one, because that compiler just keeps giving. Um, and yes, I'm pretty bitter about that damn compiler. I can't wait for Clang to come on embedded in a serious way and have some proper quality control, because I know on the desktop they're somewhat more reliable, so I assume it's going to be the same with embedded systems. Um, now, despite my frustration, this could actually be my fault. Um, I could not know something about the way optimizers behave in a very specific uh, situation. So, what I have here is a USB microcontroller. I've got a HID interface set up and I'm periodically transmitting data. This is a test, okay? So, this isn't real code, this is just me dumping the alphabet and a bunch of miscellaneous characters at the end with a new line and then uh, doing it again. So, inside the transmit function, if there is some data, it doesn't do anything, it just returns false because the USB bus is busy transmitting. If there isn't data, uh, then it's okay to initiate its own transfer and do that. The, the software one level up is responsible for retrying in a sensible manner, um, if, you know, when failure occurs. In each of these, we record this thing called a length point. A length point isn't a formal term. Um, so uh, this is just a stupid name for something. Um, all it does is record the line of code where, it, like, where the 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 macro is called, and it records a single integer of some kind. In this case, it records size. All right. Let's see if we have no, don't. Okay. So it will only transmit if a previous transmission is complete. That's pretty important um, because you don't want to steamroll over the, the, the currently pending transmission. All right, so when a transmission is complete, the micro, it, it calls this function, transmit complete. And if it's endpoint one, which is the only thing we care about, so I might as well just minimize this, get rid of the noise for people it runs this. It pops the amount of data that was in the packet from the, the transmit buffer. The packet isn't infinite size. It has like 30 bytes, 32 bytes. Um, so, well, it has 32 bytes, but it, yeah, it's a bit more complicated than that, but it's irrelevant. So, it has some bytes and it pops it from the buffer. Now, it doesn't pop negative. So, if, if the capacity was 10 bytes, for example, and the TF's data was 8, it pops down to 8. So it pops 8 bytes. It, it, can't, it doesn't pop more bytes than exist. That's not possible. Um, this is a no except type function. So it always succeeds. Um, and uh, it's a useful approach. It, yeah. So after the pop, if there's still data in the... If there's still data in the buffer, then I need to... I need to continue transmission. So I call, um, if there's still data, which means it's not empty down here, I call transmit continue once again. So what's the problem? How could this really have a problem? Well, <sighs> apparently compilers can be annoying. Um, now I'm going to give you some background about the volatile keyword. The volatile keyword, apparently I might not know something about it, but I'll tell you what I do know. The volatile keyword is usually used for memory that um, may change without the compiler knowing about it. It is not used for atomics. It is not used for memory ordering. It also can't be used for splicing. It can't be used in, in, in bit fields in the way that most people use them. Um, because the micro can only access one byte at a time, for example. So does it access, if it's a volatile, right, and two bits are volatile, how, does the compiler optimize the remaining uh, six bits in a byte as a constant, or does it? What does it do? So this is actually one of the contentions with volatile keyword, and it's why C++ twenty might deprecate a lot of its uses. But one of the uses that probably won't be deprecated is the use with registers, which is like um, a, a register is something that has flags in it, maybe like an interrupt flag and that will happen independent of the execution of the code. So the compiler will never be able to figure out whether that will change or not, because it isn't changing it. The code isn't changing it, something else is. So, 
That's what the volatile keyword does. So, what is the problem here? Well, the compiler, it seems to not believe the length stored in here, this variable here, changes. It thinks it's a constant in only one setting. This setting. Or, it may not think it's constant, that could be wrong. Or, it operates on two separate versions of that. And this is the bloody insidious um, case. I hope it isn't this. It's a really stupid bug if it is. It operates on two separate instances of it. And why do I think that could be possible? Well, because if I transmit more than the packet capacity, it does successfully transmit two different bytes with the correct lengths. And that, <laughs> that pretty strongly indicates that this condition works just fine. Um, and if I, so, and I also, um, when I'm executing the code, if I call transmit a second time after the first successful transmit, the first successful transmit calls this, and when the bug exists, the second transmit calls this, even if the, the TX data is truly empty. So, so uh, to me, that almost says it's storing length separately for each of the, inst the, each of the call sites of um, the data view size function. So that would be a bloody weird thing to happen. But here's the thing. So I'm just gonna show you the, the device run. So here's the little terminal application that we have. And okay, it's succeeding. Bloody hell, I forgot to... Okay, well, so there is it running correctly. Now, the only thing I'm gonna change now to make it break is one keyword, volatile on the length. Length is not a register. The length does not change independent of the code execution. It changes because of code execution. It, it changes in code. Um, so <laughs> it doesn't look like a register. It's not a register, okay? And it's also not stored in a mysterious block of memory which has strange alignment conditions. It's stored in normal memory. And I have no alignment conditions on this anyway. So it's not that, it's just, just a stupid thing. Okay, so let's just run the application thingy there. And hit bloody mouse isn't working. So here we go. See it's frozen after the first um, the first call here. Now if I uh, if I pause this, I can view those L points, those L blank points right here. So the first call site is interface at line 24. So the first time transmit enters, it goes straight in, no problem at all. Length point recorded as zero because it hasn't been inserted yet. It's what it should be. The next time that a length point is recorded is at 228. 228 is it inside the transmit complete function. And 228 is in this line here. So that is basically just saying there is data inside the TX. And that's correct because I'm doing 35 bytes. And so if the first time um, it transmits 30 of those bytes, so I've got five left. So that's correct, and it should record like five or something. Yep, five, there you go. So then after that's complete, so there's two things we expect here. The next thing, it should, it should be done with the data at that point. So the next line it calls is this line here, line 224. So at that point we know TX data is empty, at least from the perspective of this call site. So, how could this go wrong? <laughs> How could this possibly go wrong? Well, quite some time later, and I mean really quite some time, the polling interval is pretty slow compared to the speed it can output data. Um, it calls this, TX data is empty. So it should enter here and then record zero, but it's not doing that. Instead, it's going into here and recording 35. Okay, so we're at line 252. And the line before it, the recorded length was zero, right here. Nothing mysterious apart from my choice of naming, which is very mysterious. So the length is zero, and it was recorded just again, for thoroughness, right here. Nothing different to every other record set. All right, so the next time that length is recorded, some mysterious way without it ever entering this section, TX data is now 35 bytes again. I can tell you it's not. 
Okay? Um, and this is a bloody mystery to me. Um, <laughs> I hate compilers. So that's it. It works when, when this length variable here is volatile. And that should not be needed. And you want to avoid volatiles on variables like this because it, pro it prohibits optimizations in all kinds of places. Like, all right, well, that's the problem. I um, hope you found this interesting. If you did, hopefully you know the answer. Leave a comment down below. Bye. That's the wrong program.